How's it going, my peeps? I thought I'd post up an online match today. This is Cody Rhodes versus Kofi Kingston in just a regular one-on-one -on -one matchup. I'm playing as Kofi Kingston in this one. And I've got to say, this was a really fun match. I played this one about two weeks ago. It was a really fun match, back and forth, and I, I just enjoyed this matchup. Probably my favorite matchup so far since getting the video game. Anyways, for those of you wondering why I didn't post up the TNA Final Resolution Prediction Game videos, I just simply didn't have the time to post them up, unfortunately. I didn't have the time to record the matches or anything like that, which sucks since this makes it the first uh, prediction game that I missed, or the first pay-per-view um, where I don't post up uh, prediction game videos, of, of course, since starting. You know, I, I think I started with TNA's Bound for Glory pay-per-view last year, and since then, every single time there was a pay-per-view, I would post up my prediction game videos, same goes for WWE whenever I started that. I think I started it with Extreme Rules 2011. And what a great pay-per-view to start the prediction game videos with. Because that was this pay-per-view where Christian won the World Heavyweight Championship in that ladder match against Del Rio. That was an awesome moment. One of my favorite world title victories, if not my favorite. So, uh, also, I'd like to point out that I'm trying to post up videos on a more regular basis now, posting up more videos more frequently. I might have said that in the past, but uh, yeah, I'm really trying to stick to that, to post up more videos more frequently. Uh, maybe even a video every single day, or more than that, but I'm not going to make any guarantees because... I don't want I don't want to make a guarantee and then, you know, not deliver and not post up a video or something like that. I'm not going to give a schedule either, like, you know, give you guys dates or, uh, you know, uh, days of the week where I post this or I post that. Uh, but maybe in the future I will do so, but for now I'm just trying to post up more videos, like I said, more frequently. And as far as the roulette goes, uh, I'll try and get that up tomorrow. I'll try to record that today and post it up tomorrow, maybe in the afternoon or something like that. And I might vary things up a bit, post up some stuff other than wrestling gameplay. We'll see about that. Anyways, I want to talk about Raw last night. You know, last night when I did my review results video, I kind of missed a couple things I wanted to talk about. First things first, where was 3MB? On Twitter, they said, well, Drew McIntyre said that they would deliver the state of the WWE address or something like that on Raw, but they weren't even on the show. What's up with that? You know, I was expecting them to be in this segment all night. All night watching Raw, I was like, okay, when's 3MB going to be on? So, you know, we could see what they have to say. But they, they weren't on, so uh, they didn't have a match, they didn't have a segment, they didn't have anything. Really no mention of 3MB on Raw. So, I don't know if it was a change of plans, or... Actually, <laughs> this reminds me of that one time when John Morrison was on his way out. And it was like his last Raw. I think the day before, or the day of Raw. Brodus Clay, who still hadn't returned, so... You know, the last we'd seen of Brodus Clay, he was Del Rio's manager, and he was playing that monster heel role. And, you know, it was expected that John Morrison was probably going to be leaving after that Raw. That was going to be his last Raw. And Brodus, on Twitter, tweeted something along the lines that he's going to destroy John Morrison on Raw. It was like, I was gonna, I'm going to destroy John Morrison tonight, or something like that. So with that tweet, a lot of us thought, okay... Clay is probably going to have his return match tonight, and it's going to be against John Morrison. And since John Morrison is supposed to be leaving, Clay's going to win the match, and like after the match, destroy John Morrison to the point where John Morrison is like injured, so they can pretty much write him out of uh, the storylines. But then come time for that Raw, Brodus Clay doesn't even debut, he doesn't have a matchup, and John Morrison, I think, got taken out by The Miz. So it seems like when Mid Carter's <laughs> tweet something out about you know, doing something on Raw, it doesn't happen. Um, well, at least in these two cases, it didn't happen. Maybe they weren't supposed to talk about it. I don't know. Anyways, moving on. Something else I wanted to talk about is Kofi Kingston and how the guy's the Intercontinental Champion. He's the IC Champion, but yet it seems like his win-loss record is just terrible. I don't know if it's just me, but it seems like every single time I see him on TV in a one-on-one -on -one matchup, he loses, like... 90% of the time, and if he's in a tag team match, and that tag team loses, it's always Kofi Kingston that gets pinned. I just think the guy shouldn't be on the losing end too much. You know, uh, like, versus Antonio Cesaro, he hasn't beaten Antonio Cesaro once. I mean, he beat him once, I think, by disqualification on main event, maybe. 
But as far as one-on-one -on -one matches or just any encounter with, with Antonio Cesaro, it seems like they're making it pretty clear that Antonio Cesaro <laughs> is a superior competitor. I mean, on Rom, you know, Antonio Cesaro, he's the heel, but he actually beat Kofi Kingston clean. And also in that Fatal 4-Way matchup, he also pinned, Kofi Kingston was the one to get pinned by Antonio Cesaro. Uh, speaking of Antonio Cesaro, though, I'm really liking Antonio Cesaro right now. I wasn't a fan of Antonio Cesaro when he started, thought he was boring, uh, especially when he was, he was paired up with Aksana, and on SmackDown, he's still a SmackDown superstar, but I don't know, who, who's who's on SmackDown, who's on Raw, it doesn't really matter. Since nowadays, you have Raw superstars competing on SmackDown, SmackDown superstars competing on Raw, everybody's competing on both shows, and you also have, you know, Raw superstars challenging for the world title, or SmackDown superstars challenging for the WWE Championship, so the brand split isn't really as prominent or as strict as before, I guess, since superstars compete on both shows and they haven't had the draft in a long time. But anyways, I went way off topic there. I was talking about Antonio Cesaro and how I'm a big fan of him right now. He's actually one of my favorite parts of Raw when I tune into Raw. I'm always looking forward to Antonio Cesaro's matchup or segments. Really a fan of Antonio Cesaro now. Hope he keeps on or holds on to that championship for for a good while. You know, he actually has a rematch against our truth at TLC, which I kind of predicted. I kind of predicted in the last prediction game video that we might see a rematch between the two, and now it's happening. Usually, when it comes to the mid card titles, the challengers like only get one rematch. I mean, one match at a pay per view, and then maybe a rematch on Raw or something like that. But usually they don't get two pay-per-view title shots. But in this case, it looks like Art Truth is getting a second one. And as you just saw here, Cody Rhodes hits the crossroads on me. And it looks like I had a comeback left. And usually when I do the comeback, I'm not even trying to do the comeback. I'm just tapping buttons to get up. And it just so happens that, you know, my character has a comeback left. And when I'm tapping buttons to get up, I'm tapping, you know, every single button. So, of course, I press the Y button. I don't know if in this case, I was just tapping buttons randomly and press the Y button like that. Or if I purposely, you know, press the Y button to get up with the comeback. But anyways, this match should be over soon. I don't know if I have anything else to say. Actually, yes. Aces and eights. The freaking thing. <laughs> it's gone on too long, man. We only know Devon is a part of the team. You know, he's been a mask. And Doc... And that, that's about it. You know, there's no top stars revealed yet. Will there be any top stars revealed for Aces and Eights? So far, it's only Devon and Doc. And this thing has been going on for so long, but we don't know the reasoning behind their attacks, why they're doing what they're doing, who's the leader. It's just been the same thing over and over again, them attacking people on Impact. And, you know, all the other members are still masked. At least with the Shields, we found out right away why they're doing what they're doing. But with Aces and Aids, we really don't know. Anyways, I think this is the last uh, Trouble in Paradise I hit. And then I go for the cover and actually get the big three. So, great matchup. Really enjoy these types of matchups where, you know, you're just playing against a fair player. Great back and forth match. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this online matchup. If you did, as always, you can click that like button. I'd really appreciate it. With that said, I'm out. See you guys.